Welcome to a morning focus and it has been so long since I have actually done a morning focus with you and what I decided was instead of doing a morning focus every single morning I decided that I would choose a topic and you can always go and visit that topic. So today the topic is joy. Today, the topic is joy. This world is so full of sorrow. There is so much sorrow in this world that it is very difficult to sometimes see past that. And if you are not accustomed to looking beyond the physical world, if you are not accustomed or used to or even know that there is more than what meets the actual physical eye, then this could be quite difficult for you to understand. So I'm going to try break it down as simply as possible. Please excuse my terminology if I use he, him, she, it, they, them. Um, I'm going to be totally transparent and I agree it would be wonderful to have a genderless society because in the spiritual realm there is no gender. We have created he, him. And so you have this masculinity parading through life. You have this femininity parading through life. You have this God deity figure as he, as this masculine or powerful and characteristics and traits, whereas God is actually genderless. The Holy Spirit is genderless. Jesus was born a male over 2,000 years ago on earth. But in the spiritual realm, in the spiritual dimension, on the spiritual plane, wherever you want to call it, there is no gender. I want to read to you what A Course in Miracles, which is a spiritual development course, I want to read to you what A Course in Miracles says about the spirit of joy. And what I, what I really, really like about A Course in Miracles is that I just see new things all the time. I just see new things, things that I enjoy. And so here goes. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of joy. He is the call to return with which God blessed the minds of the separated sons. This is the vocation of the mind. It had no calling until the separation because before it had only being and would not have understood the call to right thinking. The Holy Spirit was God's answer to the separation, the means by which the atonement would repair until the whole mind returned to creating. The atonement and the separation began at the same time. When you made the ego, God placed in you the call of joy. This call is so strong that the ego always dissolves at its sound. That is why you can choose to listen to two voices within you. One you made yourself, and that one is not of God, but the other is given you by God, who asks you only to listen to it. The Holy Spirit is in you in a very literal sense. He is the voice that calls you back to where you were before and will be again. It is possible even in this world to hear only that voice and no other. It takes effort and great willingness to learn. It is the final lesson that I learned and God's sons are as equal as learners as they are as sons. The voice of the Holy Spirit is the call to atonement or the restoration of the integrity of the mind. When the atonement is complete and the whole sonship is healed, there will be no call to return. But what God creates is eternal. The Holy Spirit will remain with the sons of God to bless the creations and keep them in the light of joy. You are the kingdom of heaven, but you have let the belief in darkness enter your mind and so you need a new light. The Holy Spirit is the radiance that you must allow to banish the idea of darkness. His is the glory before which 
dissociation falls away and the kingdom of heaven breaks through into its own. So it's quite wordy, uh, and I just want to touch on a few things. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of joy. So what does a course in miracle mean when it talks about the Holy Spirit? So let me read it for you here. And I'm just going to get it. Okay, here we go. The third person of the Trinity who was created by God in response to the separation as God's remaining communication link with his separated sons. He is both the voice for God and the voice of God who guides all of the sleeping sons back to awakening. The Holy Spirit is described throughout the course as giving us the answer to the separation and bringing the plan of the atonement to us establishing our particular part in it and showing us exactly what it is. Atonement. Reconciliation with God through the wiping away of that which seems to separate us from God, our sins. In Christianity, this was achieved through Jesus paying for the sins of mankind in his crucifixion. In the course, the atonement wipes away our sins through our recognition that they were never real in the first place, a principle that Jesus demonstrated in his resurrection, which is referred to as the atonement in the course. The full awareness of atonement then is the recognition that the separation never occurred. Now, one of the terms that I find most perplexing for most people is the word God, because we all conjure up images. But how does the course define it? The infinite being who created the sons of God, created heaven as the dwelling place of his sons, created the Holy Spirit as the communication link with his separated sons, and indeed created reality itself. God has no gender or form. I want to say that again. God has no gender or form, but he does have a will, thoughts and feelings, which are timeless and limitless. God is pure love without the slightest hint of anger or attack. His love for us is beyond our current comprehension. However, he does communicate with us in the dream of time and space. He hears all our prayers and speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. It's a very difficult concept to, and, and it's something that, on my, on my spiritual journey, I'm really coming to terms with this more and more because before I personified God, I per, I personified Jesus, which I don't have an issue with in, in the time of 2000, over 2,000 years ago. But now Jesus' eternal part of Jesus is genderless, formless. He is spirit. He has aw awoken from the stream. So what A Course in Miracles says is here is God who is genderless and formless. So how do we then picture something that is genderless and formless? Because, wow, omnipresent, omniscient, you know, it's God is all present, all powerful, all knowing. How do we picture this? And so for me, if I go within, I, I have to say to myself, thank you, Albert Einstein, for making me understand really that time and space is nothing but a stubbornly persistent illusion. And in the beginning, Einstein didn't believe in God. I actually I read a book of his and he didn't believe in God. And in the end, he did. Um, again, not in a... Um, not, not in a conceptualization of an image, but in the reality that there is something far greater out there. And so it says, and I want to just read it here. Um, it is possible even in this world to hear only that voice and no other. It takes effort and great willingness to learn. So there are two voices in you. 
there's the voice for the ego, which believes it's separated from its source. It believes it's separated from God, this eternal, genderless, formless God, the creator of all, the source of all. It believes, the ego believes we are separate from that. And then there's the voice of and the voice for God, the Holy Spirit, that God created. And when we go and, and we all awake, awake and a lot of people say, well, then the Holy Spirit's job is done. Will he still be there? Yes, he will. He is a part of the Trinity. And our function was before we actually separated ourselves from God, before we became separated and in whichever way you want to believe this happened in A Course in Miracles, which, which I am more and more beginning to understand more and more clearly, um, I, I can see that in this dream state, although it appears very, very real, because we're living it, we're feeling it, we're experiencing it. So science says, if you can touch it, feel it, taste it, see it, hear it, it's real. So we could use a scientific part of our brain and go, huh, we're real. But it's the reality within the illusion. It's not true reality. It's the reality within the sleeping state. It's not real reality. So why do I call this joy? Well, what I find so joyful is that the Holy Spirit, the, the, actually the Holy Spirit is the spirit of joy. And the most joyful thing for me to have learned is, is that it is possible, even in this world, to hear only that voice, the voice of and for God, and no other. That's my aim. It is possible even in this world to hear only that voice and no other. And it doesn't mean there's going to be a secondary voice that takes over your head. And it's like, it's a different sound and it's a different this and it's a different that. No, it's going to be the same. It's going to be the same. It's going to be the same sound and everything else that you already are experiencing, except the mind, when it is totally healed, when it is totally healed, will only think the thoughts of God, will only hear the thoughts of God, will only know God, will only hear the voice of and for God. But your mind is the one that has to be healed and have to have the shifts. So it's really, really great. It's a really, really, really great teaching. The Holy Spirit is the call to return with which God blessed the minds of the separated sons. He is the call, capital C, to return with which God blessed the minds of his separated sons. So what I want to do now is I just want to say, wherever you have sorrow, wherever you have doubt, wherever you have anxiety, wherever you have disappointment, disillusion, betrayal, a sense of doom and gloom, wherever all of these things seem to overcrowd you, I just want you to take a few deep breaths in. In and out. In, out. Relax your face. Relax the muscles on your face. Breathe in and out. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of joy. And it is truly joyous to know that we can hear only this voice. God is formless. God is genderless. God is real. The Holy Spirit is literally within you. It's not conceptualized personifications of deities. Formless and genderless. The pronouns, let them fall away. Just let the, let the pronouns fall away. And where there is sorrow, know that that is the voice of the ego. Where there is disappointment, betrayal, hurt, frustration, guilt, shame, 
poverty, scarcity, and lack mentality. That is the voice of the ego. The Holy Spirit is calling us to joy. Salvation, the liberation from believing that we are separate from our soul. Atonement, knowing that we never left our source. Therefore, all those things that we thought we did wrong will just fall by the wayside and disappear beyond all dimensions of time and space into the elusive nature of what illusions are. You have that pure joy within you. If the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is within you, that means the spirit of joy is within you. But it's to push past. This morning's focus is just push past what you think. Push past what you think are clouds of doubt, disbelief, anger, irritation, negativity, frustrations, just push past that, push past all of that to the realm of joy within you. Remember, we always speak about in A Course in Miracles going beyond, going past, reaching within to. You're reaching the light within you. You're reaching God within you. You're reaching the Holy Spirit, the spirit of joy within you. So just sit silently, just for a few seconds, whether you're at work and you're about to start your day and you have your cup of coffee or tea or whatever it is that you drink, just close your eyes and breathe in and know that the joy is there. And even though you feel that you can't feel it, it is there. You just need to come before the source of all and say, open my eyes, let the scales of my heart fall away, let the scales of my eyes fall away, let me experience you and your love, and in all sincerity, you will start to see glimpses of it within you. So I love you, I cherish you, I honor you, I bless you. And I hope this morning's focus of joy will touch your hearts. And whenever you need to, just come back to this video, listen to it again. And any comments like, where was that found in A Course in Miracles? I'd like to read it or whatever. Just drop notes. And yes, I am going to be working on subtitles shortly. So take care and see you soon.